Hi, I'm just going to be giving a quick demo of my instrument, the Time Organ. It consists of a 25 key keyboard, which does have velocity sensing on the key presses, as well as um, nine buttons I've added, which I'll talk about in a second, an LCD screen for feedback to the user, um, a rotary encoder, potentiometer, two switches, and a soft pot potentiometer here. All of this is mounted on the device with wires running out the back to this Arduino on the side. And the key information comes out through the MIDI output, which is built into the, to the keyboard. There's also a a long tube which snaked through it. There's a, a microphone hiding in the end here. You can see it a little bit. Um, and that's for breath control of the device. So the basic idea is you can either use a pre recorded sample or record samples live, which will then be interacted with using granular synthesis and played back with this device. So I'll give an example here with I've got a max patch loaded up which handles the, the logic of the application and I've just got a song loaded in here. Um, and so first I'll, I'll flip this switch here which actually bypasses the vocoder so I can explain this while I'm playing without having to breathe into it. So what's playing there is a very small section of just a, a song um, that I downloaded. And that section is being played over and over again, um, faded in and out, so that it sounds like a steady stream of sound. And can be, you know, transposed and played back polyphonically. Um, so if I don't bypass the vocoder, then I can breathe into this microphone here, and you can hear uh, the ability to dynamically control the volume using my breath. So. Hopefully you've heard that. Also, I can, let's see, use these buttons here for various different things. Um, the main control to think about is the soft pot on the back, uh, which, when I press this button down, allows me to, let me turn up the volume so you can hear, allows me to scrub through the sample. and pick different parts for my granular synthesis. Um, these five buttons here are for recalling presets and you save a preset with this button so you I can say well let's say I really like let's say I really like this part right here so I can save that to my first preset. And then change to somewhere else. Change one of the other presets too, like the size of the grain window. And you can hear we've got something that sounds different, but when I press this button, it goes back to the original preset. So a lot of this information is displayed in real time on this LCD screen here so that you don't actually have to uh, look at the, the laptop screen while you're playing. So up in the top left is the, the preset that I'm on. B stands for button. So you can see as I press these that changes. And then C stands for cache because S was already taken, but that will notify me when I've successfully saved a preset. 
Um, R is for reverb. Reverb is controlled by this potentiometer here. Um, this goes from 0 to 100. Uh, the, let's see, let me see if I can focus. The V1 with the S as a suffix uh, stands for size, so that's the size of the window, um, which is, as I mentioned, affected by this rotary encoder. And then, of course, P stands for position of the grain window, so that is affected as I scrub around with this soft pot here. Um, well, it seems to be buggy right now, but that's the idea anyway. Um, the last button to think about is, well, other than I mentioned this switch bypasses the uh, not really a vocoder, but the breath control. This bypasses the breath control, and this um, switches between the soft pot controlling the um, the grain position, and if it's if it's on this, then it controls the grain size. Um, this is in case I want to affect it differently than using the rotary encoder. Um, I mostly had the switch in here for before I put in the rotary encoder, so it's it's not really used anymore. Um, but yeah, the last button to think about, um, other than this one, which I never actually ended up using for anything, but this button here is, I call it the freeze button, and what that does is it'll take um, the last five seconds of microphone input, so I can whistle here, press that button and then it's very quiet so you can't really see it on the waveform but that just recorded the last few seconds of whistling should be able to hear that so then now I can play something that something that I recorded from the microphone like so And that's primarily what I did in my actual live performance. It was mostly live recordings. Actually, I think it was entirely live recordings rather than um, sampling pre-recorded stuff. So um, it gives more of a more of an improvisational feel, I think. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Thanks.